you to do is welcome John. His message tonight, and the name of his speech is A Spoon Full of Madison. Please welcome John Beck. Thanks, Duncan. <laughs> Thank you, Duncan. I'll try not to be so serious. <laughs> welcome. I'm standing in the balcony of my apartment, staring into the distance, smelling the autumn air. I witness the colored leaves falling as they hit the ground. I'm 25 years old, and I have this deep longing in my heart for something that isn't quite right. An abyss of pain and loneliness with a slight pounding against my ribcage. It's been a busy two years traveling across Canada and parts of the United States. But I was recently appointed the youngest ever director of sales for my company. But that wasn't enough. Underneath all the charm, the glitter, and the flair, I was bathing in the sun of my emptiness. I turned towards my room as I slowly closed the glass door. The sun going down, tomorrow, a new day. How many of you had a moment like that? where you've got that longing in your heart, that deep feeling. We all get them at some degree throughout our lives. A longing is when we can't move forward because after repeated attempts of trying to achieve what we're trying to achieve, slowly convince our subconscious mind the heart, that is just not possible. It could be that small diet that you're trying to achieve and lose weight. No. That more interesting job that you would like to have, but it doesn't happen. Or how about that relationship, that long-term relationship that's not working out, that's painful and it doesn't change. Worse, something that is not in reach or you can't have that you're longing for. We go through a vicious cycle of creating these ideas within ourselves, rationalizing everything, writing things down on paper. I'm going to do things differently this time. I'll take this that worked last time and I'll take this. This might work. That's the first phase. The second phase is we double up our efforts, we go out there, and we implement everything, all of our new ideas, only to be in the third phase where nothing has changed. The results are still the same. So what do we do? Well, my suggestion to you is that we start to look at ourselves. Who are we trying to be to achieve the things that we're trying to implement? Why don't we start thinking about who we are before we start thinking of all these ideas and putting them out there and integrating them with our heart? We live in a crazy world. We've got Valentine's Day coming up. We, we go out there and we're shooting all the hearts out to everybody. In elementary school, as little children, we're taught to write the cards to every person in the classroom. That's great. But how much love did we really mean in that one little heart 
for that one specific person. How much love did we put into that? Valentine's Day, a day that we represent love, we have that once a year. We rush around, we create things for our intimate partner so that we can make it special and memorable. Why are we not doing that more throughout the year? Maybe some of you are. But I think a lot more of us could do even more. How many mothers do we have in the room? Fantastic. A mother gives so much to her children. She puts her child and her children before her. A very selfless act. <laughs> Sometimes have no choice. Rushing around, getting everything that they feel that will nurture their child to a better place. But let's look at this from another angle. Is there still a piece of longing in that mother's heart that has nothing to do with putting her child first? Is it an escape? I hope not. Is it just so happens that she loves giving everything to her child, but there's still a little bit more that she longs for? A broken piece of her heart? That something somewhere along the way was not right or hurt her? Wouldn't it be nice if she could heal from that and give that extra little bit of heart to her child? How powerful is that? So how do we do this? What do we do? Well, my suggestion to you is that we at least begin by letting go. We are not the masters of all of our answers. Our ego can't decide all the time what is right or what is wrong. But we have a hard time letting go because when we let go, what are we faced with? We're faced with our heart, the heart of hearts, the heart of who we are. But if we still have a broken heart, we need to heal that heart. A spoon full of medicine. What is that, Madison? I believe it's just that. It's a selfish act of first looking at yourself, spending the time to see what is within from the past, hurts, traumatic experiences, maybe even things where you should be making up amends to someone else. But take that spoonful of medicine Make it better for yourself because it's selfish in the beginning, but in the long run, it's selfless. Because we get to spread our love a lot more to everybody we meet every day and that we interact with. That, to me, seems to be a lot more powerful. What's one thing we can do? We could start by maybe reading more self-help books. Those books that empower yourself so that you can empower others. Dig a little deeper within yourself to find out those things that don't quite fit. Begin to heal so that you can hear those whispers in your ear that Janet Law often talks about. That quiet moment when we're alone. When we've been running from those whispers because they're closer to our heart. And it requires a little bit more courage and faith to face them. But I can assure you, if you do, so much more in our lives and the things that we're trying to achieve will happen on their own. We just have to have the idea and move forward. Two, as I've already partly mentioned, dig down, find out in your past. Unravel some of that stuff to find out where you were hurt. 
Some people say, oh, you know, that's the past. I mean, what are you dealing with the past for? That's because you didn't process it properly when you were younger. Or you couldn't because it was too painful. Find somebody you trust. Start anywhere. Tell them something until you're ready to tell them a little bit more. Heal your heart. Three, if you believe in a higher power, that's great. If you used to, I recommend you go back. <coughs> if you don't, give it some thought. Because if we can turn to ask for answers and listen to those whispers, you just might surprise yourself. I'm on the balcony of my new home. I can smell the salmon, the cooked salmon on the barbecue. The Vancouver sunshine is beaming down on my family and my friends. I'm happy. I'm newly married. I've just acquired two new children, beautiful children. Life is great. I take a little moment aside and I start to reflect and contemplate about that time in Toronto five years earlier. I had gone into the room, got down on my knees. I says, help heal my heart. My accomplishments mean nothing. Help heal my heart. Then my accomplishments might mean more to me and others. So I suggest that you take that spoonful of medicine. Why? Because it helps the sugar go down. <laughs> you laugh. I knew it was coming. I knew the laugh was coming. Wow, that was awesome. Thank awesome. you. Thank you, Dylan. But I have one question for you. Okay. Shoot. <laughs> Go back to when you were 30. Okay. Just a couple of years ago. <laughs> and help us understand, help us understand, as you go through the time warp to the age you are today, what you learned. Just one thing. Just one thing. Just one thing? Just one thing. Okay. Try to make it short. What I learned is that the amount of time that you put or invest into whatever it is you want to do in a career or whatever you want to be the best at is invest that equal amount of time with yourself. Because understanding yourself under helps you understand others. And you can't see something in others until you see it in yourself. So I would think, Duncan, that's probably the best thing that I have learned and tried to do and still try to do because that's where the real power is, is the world is about people. And if we can attract the people for whatever it is we want or where we want to go or be or become, we don't always get what we want, but we get what we need. Okay, that's <laughs> some way to go.